Hello everyone and welcome to the new admin dashboard for SongScore. As you can see we've taken a pretty good leap forward by adding some very easy to navigate charts that are interactive for your particular survey and your listeners. This is the page you land on when you first log into the admin area and as you can see we have several charts that give you a quick overview of those who are responding to your survey requests. In this case we have 81 percent female, 18 percent male, and as you run across these, you'll get particular uh, stats as you go around the different charts. So a very easy way to see how people are responding to your particular uh, survey. You can look at zip code. You can look at uh, you know all, all the different questions that are asked in your demographics when people first sign up for your survey. You can see the ages of the people who are responding to your survey, where they're listening to your station primarily, uh, what times of day they're listening, the average listening hours, as well as the ethnicity mix-up or makeup rather of your particular audience. So these are all very handy at-a-glance charts that you can use when you first dive in to the dashboard. What I want to talk to you about now is managing surveys since that's the uh, thing that you're most likely to dive into first. If you want to create a new survey you simply go to the manage surveys tab of your admin account and click on add new. Now let me go back for just a second because I already have some surveys made here. If you want to duplicate one you can simply copy it and if you're doing a survey with just a couple of song changes from week to week or every couple of weeks, that comes in very handy. In this case, I'll just copy my most recent survey. At this point, I just have to rename it. Let's say I'm getting ready to, to do this one on September the 1st. I select my start date and my end date. Let's say we want to run it through Sunday at midnight. I'll put that in there so that I don't get confused. And then I simply go through an alphabetical order and choose the songs that I want to add to the survey. So we'll add a couple here just to make it a little bit unique, change up a couple of things. It's pre-checked because we copied a previous survey. Once I've submitted that, I have that survey right here. Now I'm going to make that inactive because I don't want my public audience to see that particular survey just yet. There's two ways to hide a survey. One is by choosing it to be not active. The other is by making sure the date has passed for that particular survey. As you can see, this July survey is still technically active, but because it ended on the 16th, it won't display to my public. If I want to make that inactive, I can just save that. Now that I have my survey copied, I may want to do some particular things with it, like add some custom questions or some other things, which we'll cover in a subsequent video, which you'll find on the same page where you found this video. Once you've run a survey, it's time to look at the results. And you have two types of results. You have view results, view custom results, and then export results. Export is simple. It just gives you a CSV file which you can import into your Excel or Google Docs spreadsheet and begin to analyze that way. Custom results are the results of particular questions you may add to the survey. In this particular case, I don't have any custom questions, so there won't be any custom results. We will cover custom questions in another video, however. We'll click on View Results. So when I first land on the Survey Results page, I have all of these filters at the top that I can use to filter my results. And then I have my raw data table, and then I have a quick chart at the bottom. This graph or bar chart gives me a quick look at what's going on with my songs. Now because this is a demo, there's only one response so far, so these numbers are all very similar. However, if you look at the chart, it always automatically calculates the mean score of your current responses. Everything above that mean score is going to have a green bar. Everything below it will have a red bar. This is a very easy way to very quickly look at the center of your chart responses and everything that has a positive score above that. It doesn't mean these songs are bad. It just means they're below the mean score at that particular time. That score is going to change up or down, calculated in real time each time you load this page. So if I had 100 responses uh, to my scores, you would see quite a bit of a different uh, array of green and red bars. At the top, you can put in any zip code, any gender, ethnic background, age breakdown, or even favorite radio stations, and then filter your results accordingly. In the middle, we have our raw data table. And when you look at this, it's quite simple. Every column can be sorted The songs are listed by default with the average rating. 
So they wrote on a scale of one to five. So you'd have a five if you happen to have one at the top, down to a zero at the bottom. You can also sort by overall positive score, overall negative, unfamiliar, whether they loved it, liked it, or just thought it was okay. All the questions that they're asked, dislike, hate it, tired, tired no, tired yes. Play more, play yes, play the same, and momentum score. Momentum score is a fun little tool that we've added, which calculates using a special formula, which we'll explain in another video. Finally, at the end, you'll see how many people have actually scored a particular song. Now, you may see a difference in one song to the next, and that is because we do not ask any additional questions on a song unless they first vote that that song is familiar to them. If they say it's not familiar, they're moved on to the next song, so they don't give answers that they're really not qualified to give. Therefore, you may have rated counts that vary in a particular survey. That's the overview on the Manage Surveys tab. The next video will move on to another area.